Yo, what is up guys? There's something that I really need to address before I allow you guys to watch the full episode. No, I'm just kidding. But for real. Um, there's one thing I really need to address that in the first 10 minutes of this episode, there will be some technical difficulties between the guests, uh, Brayden Lim. Uh, simply because there, there was some issue with, with my recording software and there wasn't any audio coming out from his side. So I really like to apologize for that uh, technical difficulty and I really hope you guys watch till the end of this episode. Enjoy. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the most controversial podcast in Malaysia. I'm your host, Derek Chow. And yeah, it's been three months since the last episode. I hope you guys missed me. I hope you did. And anyways, today we have a very special guest uh, who's a footballer for KDH Global FC and MK12. Just this year, he has won about uh, multiple awards actually. He is he, he's a winner of Liga Superior Season A and b which is champions of malaysia right champions of kl yeah my bad right so he's also champion of gsl cup uh, final summer and satya alam cup bronze right let me apologize if i'm quite rusty bro <laughs> yeah it's it's been three months bro can you imagine three months not doing podcasts and i'm back so yeah Let's get straight to the point. So, I seen you've been really busy, you know, like actually like a pro player. So, what 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 are your training schedules? Right. So I do some individual, uh, work like um, wall passing, uh, ball mastery, and all that. You always have to sharpen the skills. Train about four times a four times a week. Friday rest, then games on Saturday and Sunday, depending. I see. Damn. Wow. Your your schedule doesn't sound like there's school in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, how do you the- how do you really cope with school and your football career? I mean school I think I did alright my GCSEs two A stars and five A's, two B's. Wow. Not too bad. Huh? So Oh so then, so you're in college. Parents, uh, I had to stop football for a month. Yeah, now I'm in college. Huh? My parents taught me to finish my GCSEs early, mm. which then college is up to, up to me. I mean, if I can like quickly get it over with, or if I want to like, if I'm seventy, if I stop at if I start at seventeen, I won't be too late as well. So uh, it's up to me. But then it's important to balance studies and football as well. Like you might have to sacrifice time with friends, like uh, time with uh, like playing games and all. I, I, yeah. I don't play games personally. So it's just uh, study, football, sleep, um, and yeah, self-reflection. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Sound very productive. I mean, f- even yeah. for myself, I hardly play games. Even if I do, I'll, that's the time that I'm mm. super free. So... Normally, I'm still in high school, so my mm-hmm. my journey is not really that smooth. Cause in a way, there will there will be eight hours of school every day, and only like few mm-hmm. hours of training. So, I I I also have to 
put initiative to you know do weight training as you said early in the morning mm. and grind grind out uh. so yeah. yeah so i mean yeah go if on. you want to like if you really want to be successful in like football you really want to improve i would say if like your school starts at eight o'clock or seven thirty, wake up at like five o'clock to do training or like uh 5 30 it's up to you then do some light training first start with start light first huh? then followed by evening training if you're tired then uh eat more uh, eat more carbo- carbohydrates you know that will get you feel i mean personally i like honey honey is good to feel your energy i see i mean that's a good tip really yeah, yeah, so I'll probably take that as a consideration. So, yeah, just so you know, just now there was a technical difficulty when they can't, the viewers can't really hear you. So, mm. yeah, I mean, they could hear me doing the intro, but they can't really hear you. But now they can. So, mm. yeah, I my apologies about the technical difficulties. But yeah, you know what? Moving on. So, knowing that you're you're a KDH Global FC player, right? Um, I've seen mm. how much they charge per month and I think per term also. And I noticed mm-hmm. their, t- <laughs> their term fees are quite pricey. And mm-hmm. my question is, how do you, um, how do you think lower income families can afford to go to KDH football team if they want to go pro or make it make it to a certain level where they want to at least um, compete in Liga Super Rimao? I mean, is Director Jay, he's a very, he's a very good man. He can always compromise, but it's also depending on what you give to the team. Let's say if you need to be a, at a certain level, because the, um, the, the Director Jay is not in charge of the under-16 squad. Uh, mainly it's Coach Jaden, Coach Shogi. He's in charge of the uh, most of the sports under 14 and under 16. And he is, uh, I would say his level is very high. He used to be a K-League player wow. for Chombuk. And yeah, it's not easy to impress him. <laughs> but somehow if you do in your first trial, I think Coach Director Jay and Coach Shogi will take into consideration about the fees and everything. It's discussable. I so, see. Yeah. I also heard that some of your teammates are uh, also sponsored to play for the to play for KDH. Is that true? Um, not for me to say. Uh, I, I I can't say anything about that. <laughs> all right, all right. See, all right. So I think yeah. Let's move on. So. I heard you've been overseas. You've been you've been you've been to Korea for football, and mm. really, the KDH brought you to Korea for the exposure and things like that. I mean, this is like it's more of like a personal trip, huh? Like, coach, uh, I got the help from I got help from Coach Yogi himself to like help me arrange trip as well and. He was because he has connections and he also he's a K League player, so he knows his connections in Korea and he helped me sort that out and yeah, I mean he allowed me to go so he thinks it's okay for me to get the exposure and everything. It's it's a very good experience. So uh yeah, they helped me a lot for sure in that process. Yes. And yeah. I see. Well, them. Okay. <laughs> well, wow. all right. So um I asked for your CV uh, before a few weeks of before the actual day, um, before actually today where we have the podcast. We actually, we I asked you for your your CV and I noticed that you played for FCKL, but you did not add FCKL as the clubs that you played before. So, mm. what's up with that? I mean, F- I I mean I didn't include any because in the highlight video like I didn't include any SQL clips so I didn't really add them but because I mean in the CV highlight video mainly it's like if I wanted to send it to coaches and all from different clubs I would just present like the current team I'm playing in and yeah I mean SQL wasn't really in the clips uh, I would say that makes sense yeah but right so can you like 
probably compare your experience in both big clubs. I mean, in my opinion, KDH and FCKL, in terms of how big they are in Liga Super Rima or the amateur scene in Malaysia. Mm. FCKL, I wouldn't say a big club twice. It's not really a... It's a, it's a popular club among like uh, foreigners especially. Like FCKL, before, even before this, like in 2018 or 19, it was very popular among the foreign players because of the coaches that they had. And yeah, I mean, the contrast between, like, example, FC Japan now and like uh, KDH will be that FC Japan is like, they're less serious about the professional football thing. But mm-hmm. in KDH, like, You'll really be provided if you're good enough. You when you come training and like play the matches, coach the coaches are like they, they might be very strict and like they might be very serious with you. They might score you a lot, a lot. They might uh they will have to push you for sure. But because you want to be a professional player, then they will only push you for that. But like in FC Japan, when I had the experience at the time, it was like sort of monotone in a way. Like not uh many players were like wanting to push themselves during training or uh, wanted to train at a high intensity compared to KD. Yeah, yeah. It's relatable, really. Because uh, currently in for uh, FC Japan, right, uh, we are currently in a league called uh, K- Klang Valley Junior League. I'm not sure whether you are aware of it. Mm. But since uh, the... Yeah. yeah. What's up? Right. Okay, let me... Oh, so since I, I think I heard of yeah it was just established this year ah uh, yeah okay i heard of it yeah yeah so since the the k we participated in the kv league right a lot of play surprisingly to my surprise uh of course this is just my first year into the club so to my surprise a lot of my teammates they don't really show up for practice or sometimes even games mm. yeah so mm. it also kind of demotivates me on that's why we are losing every game, you know, because we are last at the table and we are playing against teams like Kickers, Classico. I'm not sure whether you're aware of these two clubs. I, I know but, Kickers, Kickers. Yeah. So we are playing against these two sort of good clubs, you know. I mean, no offense to my coaches or my teammates and all, but really, if you were to actually compete at that, against those clubs we got to at least be consistent with our trainings and things like that right so i mean i'll be honest kdh had the same problem for all oh if you didn't know they had they had commitment problems um we train three times a week i mean for me that's like the bare minimum but they had some problems like some players had problems coming three times a week problems like um that. and some players like the coaches push in would often ask us to like update the attendance for training but some players wouldn't show up and yeah that will really affect the mood of the training at times and the coach's mood and overall we are not able to compete at the level that we really want to compete at which is frustrating and that's why we ended badly in a season c for super rima liga super liga rima yeah super rima liga yeah super rima liga. yeah <laughs> so I see like in Liga Super Remount, right, there is A, B, and C, season A, B, and C. So is there like mm-hmm. some sort of uh division, like, you know, how the EPL and championship and things like that, is that how it works? Is it like a division? Uh, no. It's not? Uh, no, no, it's not a division. It's uh, uh, just like, there's three different separate seasons. Uh, season, season A, season B, and then season C. So like, example, it's not like the EPL. EPL, there's only one season. But then, because of the lack of like teams and like that compete at a certain region that need to play again and again, or like they want to make it competitive, I guess I'm not very sure about that. But it's just three seasons, different separate seasons. I see. So, in your opinion, do you think this league is the most competitive league in grass grassroots football here? Competitive, mm. debatable. But it's definitely the they they do promote a lot yeah. of Liga Supreme for sure. But competitive wise, it's debatable. I'm I'm not 
I don't, I'm not certain that it's competitive price, the most competitive. Uh. I think in my opinion, it's quite decorated in Malaysia, this mm. league, right? Yeah. I mean, the most competitive, I think it's Liga KPS, it? Liga KPS, KMS. It's where all the JDP, AMD, they play it, but it's, it requires a lot of traveling and visa, so oh. it's uh, difficult. So I've seen you, your team and yourself has, has also played against team like AMD, JDT, mm. even went for a JDT tour, stadium tour. So mm. how was the game with them? You know, knowing that they are, they are, they are a professional club in Malaysia and facing an amateur club. So how's your experience? I mean, for AMD wise, we've been there like three times already. It's, but it's, they have very good facilities. I'll be honest, their facilities, their field, they have many fields, but like, it's very good quality fields and FIFA size, like the size of the field is much, much better compared to like UCAM, uh, UM Park and all. Mm. It's, it's very good. And then they train, I think they have the freedom to train like almost every morning, night. You know, I don't really see them uh, studying from my, I have friends there. They don't really study much in AMD. And in JDT wise, JDT, I didn't go because of uh, personal reasons. Uh... I, I got family, family problems. I got not problems, family issue, something personal. So I didn't go. I see. So these are clubs where are invitation only, right? Uh, yeah, invitations for friendly, sir. So, but it's usually like, uh, AMD. Sometimes it was going to be closed doors at first, but. I think they're allowed to upload on YouTube and also it's fine. It's I not see. Stuff like that. Right. So speaking about amateur clubs and professional football clubs uh, for the younger age group, right? So what are your advice for grassroots players in Malaysia uh, and amateur clubs in terms of how they can improve uh, how football is imaged in our country and things like that? From my experience, when after going to Korea and then coming back and then looking at the grassroots football and everything, the philosophy of Malaysia compared to Korea, it's Malaysia's philosophy is quite, I mean, I would say, it, no offense, but like disappointing because especially when I saw them play the AFF Cup and all, it was, uh, they, they basically just dribble and long ball dribble, uh, shoot, 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 shoot from anywhere. And that philosophy from like under 12 has been carried all the way up to un, um, basically adult football, which is pretty bad. But then when you see in Korea, it's like the philosophy slowly, they develop the players slowly. And well, they, the philosophy is about like passing, uh, pass and move. Whereas in Malaysia, it's just dribbling. It's, I mean, I would say, uh, Malaysia, like they have to improve on the the training wise. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say it's yeah. more on because I sp I I've spoken to one of my teachers in in my school in particular where he's he's a uh, expatriate, so he's from Ireland and he I asked him uh, uh, what are the main differences you can see in Malaysian football and um football in uk or in europe in general and he says that to be pro here is much easier to be pro in you in you simply because of how low our our standards yeah. are and also how low our the way our coaches train us in malaysia locally is far different than the coaches uh else, elsewhere yeah and overseas ma mentality here is very poor i'll be honest i'm they focus more on dirty tricks rather than tactical. Oh. Pretty bad. Yeah. I see. And you can see all the teams here play the same way. It's a pass to the wingers, the wingers dribble, hit it, smash it in. Yeah. Whereas in Europe, you can see they play like a different dynamic uh, formation. You can see them passing and moving long balls and a quick like cut back, different styles. I see. Yeah. I think I also can can start an image and relate now. <laughs> mm, yeah. 
Right, so knowing that we just had our GE15 just, I think, three weeks ago from now, what do you think our Malaysian youth and sport ministry can improve in terms of grassroots programs in f for football and things like that? Because you see, we have clubs like uh, Destiny where they give players, as I said, they give players the exposure to Germany and KDH to Korea. So what about the other immature clubs, you know? What can they improve on? For me, I still think that the grassroots football, they can improve on like, like, you said, like uh, your teacher said, the coaching. The coaching quality. Everybody... I actually went, to, when I was at Destiny at the time, there was this uh, coaching course, like an FAM coaching license course, where they coached this, like they had like a license, um, license test at the time. And all of them copied the same drill, basically. And there was not much, how do you say, innovation or anything. And it was just like robotic. But at the same time, the drills wasn't like good itself. And it sort of like limits the creativity of players. And... They don't actually use the drills to teach the players during their own at their own clubs. It's completely different. So just stick to one philosophy. Like, if you're going to if you're going to be playing tiki taka, then stick to tiki taka. You know, that's what I think. Just to improve the philosophy of football here in Malaysia. That's the first step. Yeah. Then you can then you can start talking about going overseas and yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah, the football quality here is poor so how are you going to talk about going overseas and yeah it's difficult see so i think uh you mentioned about some of the sacrifices you have to make in your football career and i don't think that's recorded in the twitch or my recording so mm -hmm. would you like to repeat that again <laughs> my apologies i mean <laughs> yeah, it's okay um sacrifices you have to make if you really want to be successful in football or let's say you want to play football overseas you have to be you have to sacrifice time with about like friends you have to sacrifice a lot of time with friends um maybe even girlfriends and uh you have to sacrifice game time like gaming i mean you can't stay at home and play games all day you can't yeah. because you might have to continue your ed pursuing your education as well that's very important because football your career can only last up to like 35 years old unless you're Ronaldo or something I'm not sure <laughs> but I mean football is a very short career so you have to think about after what afterwards as well yeah exactly that's why I'm not sure about your parents but for myself they they normally uh, emphasize on how even if you were to make it pro in football they emphasize a lot on education and what you would do after you are retired or things like that so yeah that's definitely one factor to consider if you're uh, if you made it pro so or if you get injured during the process of school this has that has happened to many people i know so they get injured during the process of even going pro and then they get lost but they don't know what to do afterwards i see a big factor as well. that's why i'm also quite that's why i'm curious how you you juggle your your studies and your football i mean knowing now you are in college right how do you really uh, schedule it to the extent where you can focus on both things i mean for me is i had like i said i had to sacrifice time with friends because usually in a day you will have maybe you might have some time to uh, take some time off and everything for me i choose to be productive like after classes at college, I'm sure you know, like, like if you take A levels, especially, you would need to do a lot, a lot of revision. And that means that you will have to sacrifice a lot of time. So after football, immediately you have to get home, study, study. You might, the, na the maximum amount of, amount of hours you take for a nap will be one hour. You get back to studying again, football, to eat, sleep, come home. Yeah. So has it, has it ever come? To an effect on you where you felt like you know giving up and you know just you're just really emotionally and physically tired of football i mean of course yeah for sure especially if you're having a bad training session or a bad game that can be a big factor 
in your studies as well. It has happened to me. And I'm sure it has happened to many people as well. But the thought for me is the thought of um making my dad proud or let's see because I've always dreamed of becoming a professional football, so I keep pushing to that goal. I keep thinking to myself, I've come so far, so there's no point in giving up now. You know? I see. So I have to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, that's like that's that. that's that's a good quote there and there. I think we should clip it there. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, I've seen uh, your highlight videos, right? And I'm just curious, because uh, um, knowing this is just my first year into uh, amateur football, so after so long, after so long of trying uh, FCKL and things like that, and I'm just curious on how... Uh, do you hire any videographer to record your games or... Yeah. I mean, Owens, I'm lucky enough to have like one of the players parents filming the games all the time or if not like during camps like p other players parents because kdh after all you know the fees are very expensive so parents are wealthy enough so they would hire like cameramen and all photographers videographers so yeah i mean it's just about luck as well <laughs> yeah, i got it but you know if you have to like ask if you have to like example if you're playing at uh a local very local club like uh ampang fc or something like that you would have to hire like, a videographer because i doubt there will be any videographers there i see if okay i see right so um if let's say a player who is um really talent uh talent wise gifted who is not really financially uh, financially able to go to clubs like KDH and many other clubs in in the amateur scene. So what do you advise them to do? Your I mean you for me is if you football is a, actually a very ex, it's an expensive sport now especially. Yeah. So you shouldn't give too much hopes on football but you have to be patient as well you know because especially if you're waiting for an opportunity to come towards you that might take a lot of time but you have to keep working hard keep pushing your abilities though it's technically you're technically gifted you also have to work on tactically as well because now football is very tactically versatile and yeah you have to keep working hard you shouldn't give up but also think of a second plan because football even with money it's not a certain hundred percent that you might go pro so yeah yeah i mean to me it's really your own effort on how much you how much effort you put in and that's how much you get in return right so yep. my following question would be what is your ultimate goal the following year bro i mean there's um there's always a big goal the big goal would be to become professional of course but i mean somewhere my goal has always been to become professional a professional footballer in europe so it's work we're working on it and next year i still i still have to take college in malaysia of course so uh i will see which club that has to offer for me and depending on where i go i mean where it leads to malaysia is very unpredictable as well yeah so yeah, you have to change plans a lot as well or change countries depending on so i'm not certain but you have to adapt around as well right so have you ever get offered or yeah get offered any pro contracts before i mean they don't offer pro contracts when you're at the age of 16 they said I th i'm pretty sure you can sign only in 18 from what i heard at least a certain time but uh no i i haven't yet no. i see because uh i have one friend who, uh, who is from fckl and recently just mm. got invited to the police club as you as you like to call it mm -hmm. pdrm fc and uh he he wasn't offered any pro contract uh as you mentioned he, he, they can only sign when they are 18 but according to yeah. him uh uh, with my verbal conversation with him, he mentioned that uh, it was he they invited him for for tryouts and 
apparently he got uh, uh, selected for the U18 team and mm. according to him he's getting paid uh, I think per month and mm. the amount of money will, only, will be accumulated and w- once he turns 18 they will return all the money to him so yeah I mean it's quite interesting the system here is a bit strange as well yeah I mean I do have a friend who is went is a new project in the FDM. Uh, it's not very clear, but it, they just started the new project and they called him up for, I think about one year to stay there at the dormitory and to train. So it's like it's a whole new team and everything is new project. He was also offered a contract. You know, they they said they will pay him, but only at eighteen they will return all the money to him. Yeah. But for yeah, so, I I forgot to mention that um my friend that I'm referring to just now, he was also um required to sign a contract, uh to yeah, yeah, yeah. to to indicate that the money will be returned to him when he's eighteen, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So, so yeah. yeah, so I think the World Cup starts at about three hours time, uh quarter final. Yeah. So which car are you leading towards, bro? I mean, I'm leading towards Croatia for me. I would, Croatia. I would like Croatia. Damn. Yeah. To me, I really didn't yeah. have time to watch a full 90 minutes game due to school, personal reasons, and also football. So I'm, uh, I'll be putting my hopes on Brazil, bro. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, I was a bit like my wife was bad. No worries, no worries. Sorry, are uh, you saying? I was saying that uh, I didn't really have time to watch World Cup. Uh, and I'm just saying that mm-hmm. I, I'm i leaning towards Brazil. What do you think? Brazil. I mean, Brazil are a very good team, I'll be honest. But I've, I have faith in Modric. Uh. Modric is my favorite player. So I think definitely Modric will create some magic. Hopefully he will... <laughs> Destroy the Brazilians. It's a done against Brazil. Hopefully, hopefully, like hopefully for you, bro. Hopefully, but honestly, <laughs> I. <laughs> but honestly, I, I, I really, I really want to see Neymar winning a World Cup, bro. I mean, with the Balando, it's kind of tricky for him. So I really want to see him win something big, right? So, I, 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 I think, yeah, are you still supporting Spurs? <laughs> No? no no i actually haven't had time to watch so much club football you know? so whatever time turns on in the premier league whatever turns on the tv i just watch and yeah i mean i haven't had time to support any real clubs after that ever since the champions league mm, it hasn't been so good it's first i see but, yeah i think yeah that's pretty much it bro thanks for having thanks for having you know what am I saying? <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for having me, and yeah, I'm really thankful for taking your. Uh, really thankful for you coming and showing up to, to the podcast and things like that. Taking up your time, especially knowing that you're a busy man, and yeah, I'm grateful and right, thank you so much, bro. All right, I think right. that's it for the podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a great 50 minutes. And I'll catch you guys in episode 13.